Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is Public Cloud for VMware Users 105, VMware Cloud Foundation or VCF. So we're going to run through VMware Cloud Foundation and talk about the various different components that make it up. Uh, we're going to talk about VCF as a consistent cloud platform, so something can deliver consistent infrastructure and consistent operations across multiple different um, types of hardware or underlying cloud. Uh, we're going to talk about the difference between private, hybrid and multi-cloud, because these are words you'll, you'll come across in any conversation around this kind of stuff. And then we're also going to go into a bit more detail about the difference between on-premises um, and then VMC and VCPP. So lots of acronyms there, but we'll go through each one in turn. So we're going to start with all the elements that I think you need for building a robust uh, cloud platform. Yeah, um, we're going to have to start with some kind of software defined compute. And obviously the, all these things are software defined because we have different underlying hardware and infrastructure underneath. So software defined compute, software defined storage, software defined networking and security. And then if it's going to be a, a modern platform, we're going to have to support modern cloud native applications. We're going to have to support containers, most probably Docker containers. And then we're going to need some kind of container um, orchestration and management tool, world's most popular being Kubernetes by far. So they're all the things we need to run stuff um, and, and run stuff consistently across different types of hardware or different types of infrastructure. Once we've got things running, we need to be able to monitor and manage them. So we need things like um, be able to do health and look at how the system is performing right now. We need to look at short term risks as in things that are going to go wrong if we don't do something about them soon. And then overall long term things like efficiency. Um, so health risk and efficiency are just different ways of looking at it just through different kind of time periods. Um, and then things like reclaimable waste, you know, to waste resources in an on-prem environment is unfortunate and less than ideal, but actually it, you've already paid for the hardware in most cases. Whereas if you waste resources in a cloud environment, you're paying for things by the second or per, per gigabyte. So everything that you waste is costing you real money. Uh, next thing is then automation and blueprints. So if we're going to have this ability to do things across multiple different environments and multiple different cloud providers and data centers, automation is the way that we get that consistency. And the way that we describe what we're going to automate, or, or if you want to think of it this way, the way we create the recipe for doing things is called a blueprint. So automation and blueprints give us the same way of deploying stuff across multiple different endpoints. Uh, biggest problem in my mind with people who are migrating to public uh, cloud or are just defining a public cloud strategy is that most people do not understand um, the application dependencies on each other, which applications talk to which other applications, how much traffic they create on, um, and, and uh, the amount of traffic and the direction of the traffic, all those things we don't really worry too much about when, it, when everything is in the same rack connected to the same high speed switches. But once you're going to start breaking an application into component parts and moving them across networks with higher latency, application traffic analysis becomes one of the things that can make or break a project so can't stress enough that that's the place where i see more most people struggling with this um cost and cost comparison and then being able to do some kind of what if modeling so let's say um I, instead of buying some new hardware or new resources i look at the implications of retiring or decommissioning something and i can see the what if scenario for that or maybe if i've got a new project coming i could have a look at the impact or model the impact of that new project now on the existing hardware i've got so i know um, how that would work out or i could even decide if i've got multiple different um, parts of infrastructure or data center or endpoints as we call them where is the best place to put something based on cost it might be that certain applications are cheaper in one environment than another and by cheaper i mean lower cost i'm not sure how well that translates um, and then things like logging and cor correlation because in my mind when things break in the it world things usually break because something just changed and if you want to fix it or get to the root cause you've got to find out what it was that just changed before something broke so this being able to log things centrally and being able to correlate things together so being able to see wh what events happen on different systems at, at a particular point in time to, to join the dots essentially 
So in my mind, they're all the things that we need in a modern cloud platform. In the VMware world, we do the compute through vSphere. We do the storage through vSAN. We do the networking and security through NSX. And all the things to do with cloud native applications, containers, and Kubernetes uh, are done in a family called Tanzu. So Tanzu is not a product. It's a family of products that um, support the build, run, manage, uh, connect, and protect um, that you may have seen in our, in our um, corporate strategy. But essentially, anything to do with uh, modern applications, whether that be cloud native applications, uh, containers, or Kubernetes, will be under the family name of Tanzu. We'll talk about those more in other videos. Um, and anything across the top, anything that's to do with the operational side of things, would fall into the vRealize uh, family of products. So vRealize Suite, uh, in the case of that application traffic analysis I talked about, that would be vRealize Network Insight. So again, a whole family of products that can help you with that. Um, but if we take all those component parts and we bundle them together or join them together in various different configurations, that's what we call VMware Cloud Foundation or VCF. It is, it, they are the basic building blocks you need to start creating a cloud platform, hence us calling it the VMware Cloud Foundation. It's the foundational set of capabilities for building um, hybrid clouds and public clouds and a pri uh, private hybrid and public clouds that can all work together. Um, so that's VMware Cloud Foundation. And just to summarize it, what that gives you, or that, that set of capabilities, is gives you consistent infrastructure so you deploy things the same way across multiple different data centers and cloud providers, even if the hardware underneath is different. And it also gives you consistent operations. So the way that we monitor and manage our environment is the same regardless of the environment, the platform, the hardware, um, even location that things are deployed at. So we want a, a sensible way and a rational way of running things and managing and monitoring things. And Cloud Foundation is a bundle of VMware products that gives you that capability. So hopefully that's um, kind of explained it a little bit better, but basically most modern um, software defined data centers and cloud environments start with this bundle of products because it is the foundational set of capabilities. So once we've got that VCF, there's a, there's a number of different ways we can deploy it. So we'll start with private cloud. Um, and this would be somebody deploying that software set, uh, software bundle or set of software capabilities in their own data center and managing it themselves, a private cloud. If you then extend that private cloud out to a public cloud provider, and here's the important part, but in a way that it looks like a single platform because the, the private cloud and the public cloud are compatible with each other and you can move things backwards and forwards between them. Um, that's what we call the hybrid cloud. So it's a common platform, even though part of it is in the public cloud and part of it's on premises. So that's what we call a hybrid cloud, an extension of your existing data center into a public cloud. The other thing that you might hear people talk about is multi-cloud. So the use and operation of multiple different cloud providers all at once. So these are the three common themes you'll hear, private cloud, hybrid cloud, and multi-cloud. We're not gonna go into any more detail here, but just to, just to give you a couple of, you know, just a name check on what those things are and what the top level, what they mean. So next things after that is, how are we able to use this VCF or VMware Cloud Foundation? So first option, the one that most people are at now, because most people have been deploying virtual machines for the last 10, 15, 20 years on vSphere, they would be somebody who has a data center or data centers uh, on premise, and they would probably refer to this as a, as a VCF or VMware Cloud Foundation SDDC, Software Defined Data Center. So this is where all of that data center is owned and managed by the customer themselves in-house. So they provide all the equipment, software licenses, skill and know how to do things. And that's what people generally refer to as, as on-premise or on-premises, depending on um, you know, your, your locality. Um, the next thing is VMC on and replace the name of the hardware provider or the platform between those curly braces. So VMC on something. Um, the first part of it, VMC, means the VMware Managed Cloud, and that means that this um, offering is owned and managed directly by VMware ourselves 
and a partner who provides the hardware or the hosting uh, for this solution. So the, probably the best known example of this is VMC on AWS. So that's the VMC managed cloud on AWS hardware in AWS data centers. The next option, uh, sorry, another example of that is VMC on Dell EMC. So that's again a VMware managed cloud on Dell EMC hardware. The difference with this one is that the Dell EMC hardware can be installed in your own building or your own data center. So you get all the benefits of the performance and speed and locality of having the equipment on site, but somebody else manages it and you pay for it um, like a cloud solution. So it's a cloud consumption model. So again, that's a relatively new one. That, that's kind of different than most people have ever seen before. And the next one is VCPP. And this is the VMware Cloud Provider Program. So this is where the um, the service is owned and managed by one of just over 4,300 VMware partners. Um, so an example of this would be something like the Azure VMware Solution or the Google Cloud VMware Engine. So what that means is VMware provide um, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud with all the software required, but it's owned and operated by them. So it's a VMware compatible cloud, uh, but it's managed by a partner in isolation, whereas the VMC offering is a VMware managed cloud. So VMware are directly involved in the management of that solution. But all those three, whether it's the customer uh, managed one, the VMC managed one or the VCPP one, are all compatible because they all use the same software stack. So we're at the end now we'll just we'll just cut through the uh, the last couple of cards on here or the elevator pitch section so if somebody asks you what is vcf it's a vmware cloud foundation and it's a bundle of vmware products that can form the basis of a private cloud hybrid cloud or multi-cloud environment next one what is vmc on something it's the vmware managed cloud and it's one that's owned and managed directly by vmware and a partner who provides the hardware or the hosting so the best known example of that is vmc on aws a vmware owned and operated cloud on amazon web services hardware in an amazon web services data center so vmc vmware managed cloud aws the the partner that provides the hardware or the hosting and then the final one is VCPP, and that is the VMware Cloud Provider Program, where that service is owned and managed by one of one of just over 4,300 VMware partners worldwide. A good example of that would be the Azure VMware solution. So VMware provide the software, but Microsoft Azure provide the management um, and the hardware and the hosting for them. So that was the end of level 100 in this series we covered an introduction we covered compute and services we covered different kinds of workloads uh, we covered the major public cloud offerings so we covered things from amazon web services google cloud platform and microsoft azure we've just covered the vmware cloud foundation vcf and there is an optional one which is 106 which is just a recap of all the end slides from each of those so it's a very quick recap of things we covered in the series so uh, thank you very much for your time, and I hope you found that useful.